Okay, we're recording. So here we have a wonderful patient from uh, Massachusetts, correct? Absolutely. And uh, several years ago, he had a problem where you had some traction on the macula, but that developed into a severely large floater. And you went to uh, Tufts University, uh, one of their associated doctors, and the, and the doctor told you to... What? The doctor said I'd have to live with it, and basically that uh, hopefully gravity would uh, take over and it would uh, pull it down so that I would no longer be problem uh, problematic with my central vision. Um, now, I, I enjoy fly fishing, which involves not only tying flies, but tying flies onto uh, a, uh, a leader tippet, and it's very small work. Mm -hmm. um, it was absolutely frustrating because I ordinarily would have been able to put the leader through the eye of the fly with one shot, but with this problem it was taking me two, three, four, five, sometimes I'd get frustrated and just say the heck with it, and, uh, um, but I, I've noticed that uh, since I had the laser treatment, that my uh, closer vision, even with glasses, is not blocked by the, uh, the central vision in my right eye. And I am right eye dominant. Right. So it made a tremendous difference. Not only that, but also in reading, I'm a, I like to read. And uh, my eye would get tired, it would water, and uh, I'd have to put the book down and come back an hour later. Um, and I've been, I've been reading without any problems ever since. Let me show since. a little bit of this membrane here. I don't think we can see that very well, but what we had here was not a run-of-the-mill floater like I have or people our age have, but this was actually the surface bag of the vitreous gel, which had been thickened like a membrane, and it went clear across your field of vision. And when you came in, your visual acuity was 2040 with correction. Uh, I diagnosed a membrane, not, this is not a common floater, I'd say this is fairly rare in patients that complain of floaters. Uh, I've done maybe five to ten of these in a decade or two. But it was uh, fairly dramatic uh, what we did here. We actually unzipped this membrane, let it retract to both sides, which is an unusual method of treatment because usually I can pulverize the floaters, but this was different. And your visual acuity, as we measured it on the eye chart when you came in, was 2040. On the same eye chart just before uh, we uh, are having this discussion today, your acuity was 2025 on the eye chart. So that is fairly significant. And of course, your doctor in, in, in New England said that, you know, it would go away with gravity. And maybe for 90% of patients that come in with eye floaters, you could say that across the board. But it doesn't apply to everybody. And we did just two laser sessions. After the first laser session, your, your visual acuity, I think, was uh, 2030 on the eye chart. And after we did the second session last week, uh, your visual acuity was 2025 on the eye chart. So that, that to me is a fabulous success. The question, of course, was whether we should try to go after some of this peripheral stuff. Uh, uh, my opinion, I think when we get a great result like that, hold off. We can always go back. We don't want to uh, uh, mess this up because the vitreous is a dynamic fluid and you shoot at one area with the laser and that can affect the mobility of something in another area. So a perfect, nothing is perfect in medicine, but this is as perfect as I would like to see it. And after two sessions, uh, it's a minor miracle and we're always happy to succeed where others have said nothing can be done. Well, I'm extremely happy with the results and I'll, Good. I'll uh, you know, uh, you can take that to the bank and as far as I'm concerned, Dr. Keller is a man to see. I don't know if I could take it to the bank. It's really not that much in the scheme of things, uh, but it certainly is rewarding emotionally, and uh, the pay is good, I have to say that. Thank you very much, and best wishes to everybody.